I have gotten to work really closely with the Congresswoman on women in science issues, and particularly, I think, in the optics field, there are not enough women. And I get to work with a lot of stakeholders and try to bridge the gap, get girls involved in STEM, and stay throughout their careers. The first time I ever saw an optics table <laughs> was uh, actually in a lab at Rice University, just a friend of my father's. I saw that optical table and just went, Wow. OSA has meant an incredible amount to me. Uh, I have been a member since I was an undergraduate student uh, at the University of Texas. I actually met Charles Towns, my first FIO, uh, as an undergraduate presenter and uh, was starstruck, obviously. And since then, I have been, uh, thankfully, OSA has been so generous, I've been a student chapter president at UC Irvine and uh, been very involved with the outreach um, opportunities that OSA provides, which are numerous, and, uh, and really enjoying the networking also because I've met people. It's a so many opportunities to meet other people working in optics and photonics from across the country, across the world. When you don't live in Europe and America, you don't get known. And it should just be that your work is so good and you get known, but it doesn't happen that way. And people who go to conferences often, they meet each other all the time, they meet your students and you get really known. And I think that's a big disadvantage you face when you live in a place that's far away. So membership prof uh, bodies like OSA, it, it really helps bridge that gap. You, you become known. And that's important because then people start looking at your work and then they realize that you're good and then maybe they call you just because your work is good.